Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Welcome back to the series on building a headphone adapter for a tube amp. And I think this is going to be a fun little project. Hopefully if you watched the, at least the for second video in the series, if not the first on the tools and the materials needed. And not going to go into a lot of more discussion about this. Let's just get straight into the build video. Here we go. Okay, well, I got three of these holes deburred, and I've got three of the positive terminals put in. I decided to put them as the top row. And so I'm going to show you how to install one of these. I'm doing it a little differently than I used to do these. I discovered that you can solder directly to these pins or these studs so you don't have to use these little cheesy little tabs that bolt underneath them and you get a lot more solid connection soldering directly to them so the first thing you do because we do need the piece of this to act like a washer so we're saving this piece here to be the washer and you cut that off then to assemble this, you get, put the plastic, the clear plastic part on, then you put the, that part on. So it looks like that. Then that goes through the hole. Then on the back side, you get the little ring. Put that on, and you get the little piece of the tab that we cut off. Put that on. Then the next thing you get is put the lock washer on, and then you start the nut. And you screw it down about halfway, but you want this to be left loose where it's not, so it's still loose. Then we want to come in and get a nice hot soldering iron and heat up the end of the stud and get some solder to flow onto the stud and then blow it off. Just like that. So now we've got the stud in place. You've got some the nut and everything on it. And you've got a little blob of solder on the end of it. So that when we go to attach the wires to it, we don't have to heat it up as much. The next thing we want to do is, well, you could do this with some pliers or something else. It's a lot easier to find, have a little wrench that's the right size to fit on these nuts and this is a nice little offset box wrench but again if you want to if you don't mind struggling a little bit you could do this with a little pair of pliers or something else you just we're not this doesn't need to be super tight and then put a drill bit through the hole in the binding post and make sure it's vertical and then tighten it down the rest of the way and there we go we got all our positive posts on the back of our box now I did we had some lunch between the last segment and this and came back and looked at this I originally was thinking about putting these on top with the knob up here and having the switch up here like that and having the front blank but the more I got to looking at it I think this switch will look better putting it on the front let me turn it around and we can put the switch over here on this side on the front 
in the same distance from the edge as these jacks on this side and then put these two guys inside the amp and then still leave the volume control on the top. I mean, I think that'll look really nice. You'll have it, it'll look like that with a, with a switch over here on this side. Now, if I mount these on the underside of the top, you're going to have to have some button head screws showing on the top. And I don't think that'll look especially nice. So what I think I'm going to do is attach them on the inside, one on each side. So they'll, they'll sit in here like that. And so the next thing we want to do, I think, is figure out where we want to put this volume knob. And we do have to be careful because on the inside here, it might be easier to see from this direction. Yeah, I think it will be. Um, we're limited on where we can put this by these jacks because they stick in pretty far. And we don't want these uh, terminals to be getting into where the jacks are. So we're going to have this sitting like this. And somewhere like that gives plenty of clearance for the wires and stuff. And let's see... Go ahead and go a little further so that we're equidistant from the edge and the front. Just like that. And that turns out to be 35 millimeters. So let's kind of flip that over and get a, a gander on what that's going to look like. Okay, there's the center. And then Come back from this edge. I think that looks good. There's even, even gaps here between here and there. So let's go ahead and mark the hole for our potentiometer. And we know it's going to be about right there. So we'll mark off 35. Come over like this. Oh, I missed it a little bit, but that's okay. So we're going to have a big old knob covering this up. And there's our... There's our hole. So I'm going to go ahead and take these jacks back out, just so we don't have anything... any chance of harming them while we're drilling this hole. And while it's probably not absolutely necessary, I am going to back this up with a little with some of the scrap wood, so that we don't end up putting a big dent right there when we are working on this. So we fit some little pieces of wood inside, like this. You want it sticking up past the edge like that, and then we come in with our center punch on our hole right there and like that then we come in with our drill and drill a pilot hole we'll start off with our 1 8 inch drill bit a little trick you can use is to figure out the size hole you need you can take the washer, because we know it fits really tight, and find a drill bit that will just go through that washer. It looks like, once again, we're using our quarter-inch drill bit. Okay, one of the things we need to do, too, see how it's got this little peg that sticks up right there? We're going to drill a hole here in the top so that that little peg sticks through that hole and that keeps the volume pot from rotating in the chassis. So the easiest way to do that is we measure from the edge of this to the center of that peg with our caliper. We can double check it. 
and looks like it's real close to five millimeters. So we're gonna mark that for the edge. And then you can double check it by taking your potentiometer and see if it that little peg is right on the mark, and it is. Now we also want to make sure that we're putting that little peg in the right place. And we want it, we want it oriented like this. And so the peg would be, actually it's on the other side. So don't get mixed up when you're looking upside and downside. It needs to be over this way. So I'm going to come over here, mark this side, and then again, put this up, make sure that that peg is, is on the mark, and it's real close. Then we find a drill bit, and this 1 8 inch drill bit looks really close. We're lucking out here that we're, it looks like almost the same size drill bits are getting used for everything. Then just double check, we want it like this. So the peg's gonna go on this side. So we center punch our mark. And let's see if it fits. Oh, just doesn't quite, oh, there it goes. Man, that is a nice snug fit, too. So, the next thing we want to do is, like we did on our other holes, we want to come in and get a much larger size bit and bevel off these holes we just drilled. Like that. And it fits perfect. Now one of the things we may run into is sometimes things like this stick through too far. Or sometimes the shaft's just a little too long and the knob doesn't fit like we want to. And that might be the case here. And it is. See the knob sticks up a little higher than we want. So I think most of these knobs ha do have a recess in them like this. And so at this point, I want to measure how deep this recess is, recess is on the knob we're going to use, which it's only about three millimeters. And then we want to come up and see, I think we probably want to put a little washer between the pot and the chassis to lower this down a little bit. But we don't want to go down so low that this little peg isn't indexed anymore because see, it doesn't stick up a whole lot. So we may end up having to do a combination of cutting this shaft off a little bit and putting a washer under here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and deal with that off camera and we'll come back and I'll show you the results. Okay, so we ended up cutting the shaft off a little bit to get it the right length where the knob would sit down. And then see how these threads are sticking up a little bit? I didn't want to deal with trying to find a washer to, that would fit in there. So I took a drill, a bigger size bit, and recessed this little place right here just a little bit so that that would sit down over those threads. We still have plenty of shaft insertion into the knob. And as you can see, it fits, just clears the chassis. And we got a little bit of adjustment if we want to move it up and down. But I, I mean, all the way down, it just barely doesn't touch. So, got a nice fit on that. So, the next thing we want to do, put this knob away so we don't scratch it up. We did decide we were going to put the switch up here in the front. And we had come over 20 millimeters, and this is 50 millimeters. And so I came over this 20 millimeters and then down from this 25 millimeters and put our mark right there. And then we get our 
happy little pieces of wood. And we got our wood here because we don't want to have to take these back out. So we want to center punch this hole. Get a little careful we don't... There we go. That's a good, good enough little mark. And then we are going to do like we always have done and drill our 1 8 inch pilot hole. And once again, another quarter inch hole for the switch to fit in. We're almost just using, I think, four drill bits for this whole project. Come in here and drill this. And then again, make sure this fits in the hole. Fits perfect. We get our larger size bit. Just clean up the edge of the hole. So now we got our hole in the front for the switch. And those are gonna, I think that's gonna look nice. So there's one last little thing we have to do with this switch though. See there's a little locking tab on there. And if you look, there's a little tab in the center there that indexes in a little groove on the switch body which you can see right there. And that keeps the switch from turning. And so we want to do the same thing like we did indexing this, but we want to be extra careful on this one because there's nothing covering up this hole if we mess this up. And so we'll measure across like that. And that's a good place to drill that hole. And it's just a little under three millimeters. So then we want to figure out which way we want to index the switch. And it looks like that little tab is in this direction. And so I would put it down. You're less likely to see anything if you do make a little slight error in where you drill that hole. And we'll mark that. Come in, carefully center punch this. Yep. And then, let's see. We possibly are gonna be using, actually the 1 8 is a little big. Let's get a, let's get a little smaller bit to start out with on that. We'll try a 3 30 seconds because we only want that as big as it absolutely needs to be for that little tab to go down there. And some people just leave that washer off or they grind that little tab off. It's not likely the switch is going to rotate if you don't want to risk this, but I like using those little tabs when they're there. So start off slow so the bit doesn't walk. Get a little bit of a start and then come in here and hold the washer up and see if it looks like that tab's falling in that little hole that we're fixing to drill. It looks real close. So let's give this a try. See if it'll fit down in there. Yep. We might need to, I think it needs to go that way just a little bit. Now let's see. Come in here on, on the inside and clean it deeper, this little hole we made. Lots of drill bit changing. And definitely recommend getting a drill that has a keyless chuck because it's a really pain to have to use a chuck key every time you change the bit. Here we go. So we do have a you got a nut on the inside and a little 
lock washer. And that way you can get this thing to sit like super flush. Index screw facing down. Put our index washer on. And tighten the nut down. And there we go. Even the nut not tight, it won't it won't rotate. And it sits right in the little hole we made there. So that worked out perfect. Last thing we need to do is drill the two holes on each side to mount the power resistors, and we are done with all of our fabrication work. One of the things we can't do is just direct sit this on here and mark it because it's going to be reversed. So the easy way to deal with this is get a clean sheet of paper and hold this down and mark the two holes. Just like that. And tear out the piece of paper and then we want to flip it over make sure that you you get the right two holes which would be like that yep and then you can mark the two holes on the other side and then you can center punch where you want to put these on each side and so I'm going to take a look at that for a minute off camera and get these two holes drilled and then we'll Get these bolted down and start working on wiring the inside of this thing up. Hope you're enjoying this series and this is going to be a useful thing for you, especially if you're a headphone user with a tube amp. So if you're enjoying this, please subscribe, please like the video, and I'll see you on the next round of Headphone Adapter Fun. Have a great day!